Welcome back Guardians. A couple of weeks ago I made a video about Shayura, a Guardian who is currently hunting down other Guardians who wield stasis. I mentioned that she was the new Shin Malfur. And oh boy, I quickly found out that a lot of people do not like that comparison. She's not at all like Shin Malfur. Shin believed in balance and that embracing the dark was sometimes the only way forward. Shayura is a pseudo-religious zealot who sees everyone as completely good or completely evil, with no in-between. In short, Shin is a hero, Shayura is just an arsehole playing hero. Shayura will never be the new Shin Malfur, nobody will. Shin passed the mantle to us. Shayura is a rogue fanatic who needs to be put down. I'll be honest, my initial intention with the comparison was that I felt Shayura was going to have this epic ongoing saga, similar to Shin Malfur and Dredgen Yor, and I got the feeling like Bungie was going to continue to add to her story. I initially did not literally mean she's going to take over from Shin Malfur. Regardless, the passionate responses to my comparison got me thinking about the similarities and differences between Shin and Shayura. And after rereading all of Shin's lore, I think that Shayura actually has a lot in common with Shin. And so this video is going to be structured a bit like a debate, where I argue for the statement, Shayura is the new Shin Malfur. I would love to do more of these discussion videos, a bit like a law debate, because they're really fun to write. However, what is often not fun is reading the comments afterwards. Let's just say people can get a bit too passionate. Of course, feel free to completely disagree with me, that's fine. Just try to refrain from the name calling. Also, if you prefer to have this conversation live, I do live stream every day over on Twitch and you're welcome to come and chat about it. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 law debate. Right, so to structure this video, obviously I cannot debate anyone because I'm here talking to myself. So I've taken the top comment from Shayura's YouTube video and also the top liked comment from Twitter to represent the argument that Shayura will not be the next Shin Malfur and Shayura is nothing like Shin Malfur. So the top YouTube comment read, She's not like Shin. Shin had a method to what he was doing. Not to draw out guardians tempted by the darkness, but to draw out guardians tempted by the darkness who couldn't handle it or balance it with the light. Huge difference. Shayura is fueled by trauma and the rage and righteousness of a zealot. Now to the Twitter defense. But first, a little bit of backstory to what people were responding to on Twitter just for transparency. Basically, I made a post saying that both Shayura and Shin killed guardians who willed the darkness. Shin was motivated by revenge and Shayura's trigger was a traumatic event followed by PTSD. I said that Shayura doesn't get the opportunity for a redemption arc with people calling for her to be killed. The top liked responses were this. I think most people deserve a chance at redemption. Unfortunately, the way Shayura is going is probably not coming anytime soon. Shin killed guardians who were willing to use the darkness to spread their malevolence. Shayura is killing anyone who uses darkness. Period. I'm sorry, but you're wrong here. Shayura is delusional. Literally. Shin is all about walking the line between the darkness and the light. His whole Shadows of Your ruse might be to draw out corrupted guardians, but he never condoned the use of thorn replicas if you could control it. I think the difference comes down to who they kill. Shin Malfur killed people who went overboard with the darkness, building up his legacy as someone like Shayura in order to keep them in line. Ultimately, he believed in balance. Shayura doesn't see this. She's more like an awe. Right, so a lot of the comments reflect similar feedback. I think you can pretty clearly see some of the argument points. From reading a bunch of the responses, these are the three main reasons to why I think people did not like the Shin Shayura comparison. The first point is that people believe that Shin Malfur was about balancing the light and the dark, whereas Shayura is killing anyone who wields the darkness, i.e. stasis. The second point is that people believe there is a difference between who Shin Malfur hunted and who Shayura hunted, with a consensus that Shin only hunted guardians who had gone too far, who had fell to darkness, or were too weak to wield the darkness, 
and Chiura is hunting anyone wielding stasis. And I think the final point that comes across in many of the comments relates to Shayura's mental health. She's unhinged, she's crazy, she is fanatical, and so you cannot reason with her. So that will be the structure of this video. So let me give you my rebuttals to each of these points. Point number one, the idea that Shin is about balancing the light and the darkness, and Shayura is not. I agree with part of this, but it's not the full picture. Shin Malfur's story is about finding the grey, the line between the light and the darkness. You, the Guardian, showed him that. Have a listen to the Revelations and Invitations law entry. It reads, I am burdening you with the full reality of the gambit at play because I believe in you. My earlier words, my gifting of the last word, that was earned and all true. You are the future of this war. You and a few like you are the warriors who can walk the line between light and dark. And so I ask you, are you up to the task? Or have I risked all I have struggled to build on a hero who is not yet ready to become a legend? S. And also have a listen to this from the law entry, A New Legend to Guide Them. It reads, Do you see your role in all of this? Can you understand the importance of your deeds? The hero of the Red War, the judge, jury, and executioner of the scorned barons. Your legend has only grown since your revival. So many challenges faced, so many obstacles overcome. It is you who must now show the rest. Every guardian, every warrior, every huddled, hopeful, broken soul that we are ready to face any threat. And to do so, we must be willing and able to become masters of the light and the dark. So, I definitely don't dispute that Shin Malfur acknowledged the need to balance light and dark, but what I think people are forgetting, or not acknowledging, is that this was not always the way in Shin's thinking. In Shin's early days, the time after losing his third father, Jaren Ward, and hunting down Dredgen Yor, he dealt in absolutes. He used a black and white mindset, a good versus evil mindset. Ironically, this is the exact issue that people have with Shayura. She is currently dealing in absolutes. If you wield stasis, it means you support the darkness and you should be killed. Have a listen to how Shin Malfur describes his own life. The law entry, a gift and a touch of grey, reads, My life has always been about absolutes. There is light and there is dark, and I made my purpose to defend against the whispered corruption of the shadow's calling. I've seen no middle ground, though maybe I've always known it exists. I've also seen many heroes tempt that sinister fate and the dire consequences born of their ignorance, pride, selfishness. I've put many down, more than anyone knows, more than I'll ever confess. Seeing you, watching you, I don't feel I was wrong in my actions, but I now know I was wrong in my core assumption, my core belief. To me, there was only ever white and black, good and evil. In you, I see blinding light. I see a hero among heroes. I see the hope you inspire shining through. But I also see, for the first time, maybe, just maybe, a little bit of grey. And with that, an end to last rites and final words. S. Shin admits he used to see things as good and evil, as light and dark, how there was no middle ground, and how he was so adamant in his belief, he took out guardians permanently. He took out more guardians than anyone knows about, and more than he'll ever confess. It was you, the guardian, who provided the catalyst for him to understand there was a middle ground, that maybe balance could be achieved. You are the grey, you are the line between dark and light. So my argument is this, if you take Shayura now, she deals in absolutes. Her behavior is very similar to a young Shin Malfur. Of course, Shin Malfur saw the errors in his ways and eventually embraced balance, whereas Shayura has yet to discover that. And that is why I still think it's right to say Shayura is the new Shin Malfur. She's literally acting out his narrative arc. Shin lost his father to Dredgen Yor and then began to destroy anyone who associated with the darkness. Similarly, Shayura had this near-death experience, i.e. trauma, and now she is dealing in absolutes, just like a young Shin Malfur did. Right, let's move on to debate point number two, 
which is people believing Shin Malfur was more justified in those who he hunted. It is hard to summarize everyone's thoughts here, but there are a lot of comments around how Shin only hunted those who had already fallen to the darkness, or he hunted guardians who had already embraced the darkness, or he only hunted guardians who were too weak to wield the darkness, and that they were going to be a threat to the city. I completely disagree with Shin being more justified in who he hunted. In fact, I again think that Shin and Shayura have very similar stories. A young Shin Malfur and Shayura both acted as lone wolves. They are the judge, the jury, and the executioner. Have a listen to how Shin describes his own history, how he would end someone, not for using the darkness, but even for just considering it, just for seeking it out. The law entry, a gift and a touch of grey reads. I've hunted agents of the darkness for longer than I care to recount, from childhood to now. Not constant, not always, but anymore, it's what defines me. My drive has long been clear. Seek the shadow and your future is forfeit. Seek the dark and I will end you. Also have a listen to this law entry, where the Praxic Order challenges Shin Malfur. The Praxic Order restrains two ghosts who Shin was about to finish off. Shin believes that the Guardians have consorted with the Darkness and are in possession of Dark Artifacts, and that is enough justification to put them out of action permanently. The Salt Mines Law entry starts with a gnaw from the Praxic Order saying this. Stole the words right out of my mouth, she replied. These ghosts are coming with us. No more killing. Your reputation won't protect you. Your jurisdiction ends in the city, came the reply. These two are my problem to solve. And all glowered, they're third degree offenders, consorting with the darkness on a material level only, collecting and concealing illegal artifacts. We'll rehabilitate and re-educate them if we need to. And they will continue behind your backs. They're already addicted, power corrupts. You're costing us ghosts, means to fight enemies of humanity, these Guardians represent more than potential dredgens. Right, so you can see how Shin believes that collecting these dark artifacts means there is no hope for these Guardians, and that they should be taken out. The Praxic Order, on the other hand, would prefer to rehabilitate and re-educate them. We, right now, possess darkness artifacts to wield stasis. If we met Shin Malfur in his early days, he would have tried to take us out. I think people will argue that Shin only did this because he knew that they were too weak to wield the darkness. And that definitely is a big component of Shin's story, that he sets all of these traps to see who can safely wield the darkness. And if you can't, you meet your end. And of course, the Guardian is the first to convince him that maybe we can wield the light and the dark. The main issue I have with this is it is solely based on Shin's word. Shin is the one to decide who is weak, who is strong, and who needs to be culled. And once again, I believe this mirrors Shayura's story. Let me explain. Shin Malfur disguised himself as Dredgen Vale and proliferated the Shadows of Yore. There were definitely Guardians already following in Dredgen Yore's footsteps prior to Shin Malfur's Shadows of Yore, and often they were just called Shadows. But Shin's disguise as Dredgen Vale was really the catalyst for more Guardians seeking out the Shadows of Yore. One of the things that Shin Malfur did was he had Callum Sol, also known as Dredgen Cull, preach a bunch of fanatical teachings about Dredgen Yore. It was bait for anyone who would adopt that style of thinking. He then had Callum fake his death to really solidify those who would choose the darkness over the light. By the way, Callum could still technically be revived. He actually swapped out his ghost during the staged shootout. Shin Malfur also monitored Gambit, believing that the use of darkness in Gambit would also reveal guardians looking to embrace the darkness. Shin Malfur would refer to anyone taking these dark paths as weak, weak guardians looking for power in the darkness. Shin Malfur refers to killing those weak guardians as a culling, Hence why Callum was called Dredging Cull. His plan was to bait out any Guardian who were weak and easily corruptible. Have a listen to the law entry, The Liar's Trap. It reads, Which leads to the other need addressed by Gambit's promise. 
those guardians who would give freely of themselves and seek not only power in the shadows, but comfort, purpose. They have been drawn out and addressed, some with force, sadly, an end. Others quickly forfeit their troubling ambitions when faced with the dire truth of the journey they'd begun. In the end, many shadows have fallen, but they have all been false prophets, lost souls who would have fallen to despair sooner or later. Best to tempt them here and now in a manner we can control and correct than to allow the weak willed to fester within our ranks. So Shin basically justifies his plans as he believes it will reveal weak and corruptible guardians who if they are not stopped will embrace the darkness and eventually turn the power upon the city. Shin believes that it is better to bait out these weak guardians now and get rid of them before they fester within our ranks. It was only when Shin took a risk, took a risk on the guardian, on you, that he changed this opinion. The Guardian is one of the few who get given an opportunity to explore the darkness without being destroyed by Shin. Shin Malfur lets us dabble with the darkness more than any other because he had this sense that maybe we could balance it. Of course, Shin still warned us that if we failed, he would end us. The law entry, something new, reads. Yet here we are, you. A guardian worthy of legend, dancing ever closer to the edge of an abyss. And I, who stands against those who would tempt such a fate. Yet I, for the first time, haven't moved to stop the music. This is something new. But no, should you overreach, should the consequences of the steps you take catch innocence in your wake, should your path veer blindly toward the perversion of your will and the whispers become your truth, I will be there to end it. And you. But you already knew I was going to say that. Understand this is not a threat, it's just the way of things. Now this idea that embracing darkness is a form of weakness is very much repeated in Shayura's story. Shayura believes that guardians embracing the darkness, wielding stasis, is because they are desperate and they'll do anything to survive. Of course, this is the entire theme with the darkness and the pyramid ships. They constantly say that we are your salvation, trying to convince guardians that in order to survive, we need to wield the darkness. Have a listen to the Pyrrhic Ascent Boots, which is the major turning point for Shayura where she truly believes that embracing stasis, and by extension the darkness, is a sign of weakness. The Pyrrhic Ascent Boots reads, I remember, Shayura finally replies, her own internal fears overlapping with memories of dark times that her fire team experienced below the ruins of Chicago. I never forgot how abandoned we felt, Shayura adds, a tightness in her voice. The day Gaul stole the light, when they were so far from home, when they went from hunters to hunted. Shayura also remembers what went unsaid. She remembers those feelings of desperation and abandonment and how she would have accepted any opportunity if it meant living. Her desperate moment did not end in such darkness, but she cannot help but wonder about other guardians. That when faced with a choice between annihilation and salvation, they might make the wrong choice. It is in that moment of quiet revelation that the traveller stirs for the first time in years. A glow builds within, and only then does Shayura look up at her silent god. A wave of light washes over her, and it feels like absolution. When the city is awash in light, with the fearful and the faithful holding Congress in the shadow of an indifferent god, Shayura slips away into the crowd. She does not need to witness the traveller's grandiose power, to know what is being asked of her. She does not need time to set herself to work. Shayura's path is clear. So you can see that this was the turning point for Shayura. She believes when guardians are faced with annihilation or salvation, they may choose salvation, meaning they may wield stasis. This of course sets her on a path of hunting down guardians who wield stasis. So to summarize my response to point number two, which was, Shin Malfur was more justified in those who he hunted. I completely disagree. Shayura and Shin Malfur were very similar in their thinking. Both considered embracing darkness as a sign of weakness, and therefore that was enough evidence to remove the Guardian permanently. 
On top of that, Shin also created this elaborate trap for what he describes as weak guardians, a trap where he was the judge, jury, and executioner. And so if you believe that Shin Malfair was correct in everyone he hunted, you have to believe that 100% of the time he made the right call. That when he destroyed a guardian, he did not make a mistake. That they were destined to be a threat to the city. Okay, let's move on to the final discussion point that came across in many of the comments. Shayura cannot be reasoned with. She's unhinged, she's crazy, she's fanatical. People compare this mindset to that of Shin Malfur, saying that Shin is sound of mind because he had a very deliberate plan to capture potential dredgens. Now, you could argue this point in itself. Is it possible to be sound of mind and permanently kill guardians? Is it normal behavior to lure guardians into embracing the darkness only to take them out? Is it possible for any guardian to quote, be normal when we witness so much loss and destruction daily? I mean, we literally kill our friends in the crucible. Of course, a ghost will revive them, but you still gotta kill them. Some would argue that it is more normal for all of this constant death and war to have an impact on your psychology. It should impact you. Regardless, I will admit my initial reaction to Shayura was the same as most. I said the exact same things. She's an absolute nutter. She's driving around with human skulls or guardian skulls in her ship while praising the Praxic Fire. We need to take her out. And I think the irony in Shayura's story is it's not black and white. It's very much grey. The writers of Shayura's story spent a lot of time to try and get the audience to empathize and understand her trauma. The 15 Trials of Osiris lore entries are all about setting up Shayura's backstory. After Shayura has an episode and tries to kill a guardian in a Trials of Osiris match, her team take her to the tower to debrief, trying to get her to speak with a Korra about what essentially sounds like PTSD. Shayura even acknowledges that something is wrong. Have a listen to the Pyrrhic Ascent gloves. They read, Shayura looks at Aisha out of the corner of her eye, seeing the twinned look of support and worry on her face. Can guardians be unfit for duty? Shayura wonders aloud, her voice muffled by the tabletop. I mean, Aisha replies, her hesitation has a palpable sting. I don't know if I'm okay. Shayura finds the courage to admit. Her heart races as the words pass her lips. When she feels Aisha's arms around her shoulders, it steadies her pulse. Shayura relaxes into the supportive embrace of a friend. Now, of course, all of this changes once Shayura starts to actively target guardians who wield stasis. She no longer is delusional, but rather seeking out and hunting stasis guardians. Of course, this is intentional. The writers want to flip our emotions, to go from feeling empathy for a broken guardian to feeling disgust and hate for Shayura as she targets stasis guardians. And although that is my gut response to feel disgust towards her actions, I do question why does Shayura not get the opportunity to learn like Shin did? She's making all the same mistakes Shin Malfur made. She works in absolutes. She hunts guardians who embrace the darkness. Is a redemption arc possible for her? I think that Shin's story, a story about revenge, is much easier to handle and justify. It is a story that we are all familiar with. The writers even actually hint at this, that Shin is an easy character to connect with. Have a listen to the pain of what's right. It reads, I've played a role for some time now. Many, actually. But my names, Shin Malfur, the Renegade, various others handed down by fools and hard cases, or even the one or two I've hidden behind over the many years I've spent running from my past and toward an ever-darkening future, they all serve a purpose, and they all start with Shin, the poor, lost, lonely boy whose entire world had been taken from him. The tale of my youth and Palamon is all true, that it tends to elicit sympathy and set my story on the path of the right and just is not a ruse. I am right, and I am just, but ask yourself, did the fact I began as a victim color your perception of me? Is my path my cause, more righteous because I was owed justice and vengeance. 
And so I do think it is easier to get on board with a story about revenge. I think it's easier to accept Shin's actions because we are quite familiar with revenge stories. On the other hand, Shayura's story is much harder to connect with. It sort of reminds me of the movie The Joker. We can't condone her actions because they are awful, but we also understand her backstory and how she got to this point, how she became a villain. And similar to The Joker, you would say that you can't reason with The Joker. He's too far gone. So how do you wrap up this point about Shayura's mental health? I think people calling for Shayura to be straight up killed is too far. Of course, she needs to be brought to justice, and there should be at least an attempt to pull her away from her current way of thinking. So, did I convince you Shayura is the new Shin Malfur? She's not the current Shin, the Shin we know now, the Shin that wants balance, but she definitely has repeated the same mistakes of an early Shin, the Shin that worked in absolutes, the Shin that killed untold amounts of Guardians for just pursuing the darkness. And with that, that concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore debate. Let's do this. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, if I've convinced you that Shayura could be the new Shin Malfur, you can leave the word Shayura. If you are sticking with the idea that Shin and Shayura are nothing alike, you can leave the word Shin. And as usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.